Hello, good afternoon, and it's uh, showtime. I'm William Hook, and my show this year is entitled Blue Skies Up Above. And I found that to be a positive look at a difficult year, and so I hope my artwork uh, reflects it. Um, the first painting I'll talk about is, is uh, a scene from California, high tide, and um, at sundown. It, it's a painting that I worked on for a long time. Actually, I've painted this painting more than once. And um, I happen to think it, it's probably the best it's ever looked. You know, it it's, uh, was originally in my retrospective, and, and now you could probably see the difference if you have that book. Um, so I enjoy making that one. It's, it doesn't talk to the blue skies idea, but nonetheless, my works are pretty, you know, widely uh, distributed as far as subjects. So the next one is uh, Plaster Blaster. And it's, uh, I have fun naming these things as much as anything. Um, this one is, is kind of typical of a, it's a wall in Taos, New Mexico. It's actually not a prison wall, but um, you know, it's, it's been, you know, seeing some abuse. And uh, as a result, it's what happens uh, with old adobes that uh, are ignored, but yet loved in their own personal way. Uh, the next painting is uh, part of the contemporaries that I have in this year's show. Um, introduced modern work two years ago at my shows. And as a result, I've continued to do more of that work. And it's really of interest to me that these works are different. It took me about 70 years to get the guts to put together a contemporary painting. And once I did, uh, lo and behold, here this sort of thing is. Um, quite honestly, it's, uh, I named these, whether I paint them in Carmel, California at my studio, or in Santa Fe, New Mexico at my studio. So what happens is they get named Carmel number such and such or Santa Fe number such and such. And in that way, I actually can't remember the titles. Uh, I haven't given them any kind of title, but this one is really kind of based off of a painting that I had made last year that has a little bit of blue sky. And so it really was a scene in northern New Mexico with a yellow field and uh, some adobe and that sort of thing. So I enjoyed making this particular one. Um, I guess I, I can't even remember the title of the painting I made it from, but uh, I like it and it, it really does well represent what I'm doing with my contemporary. Now the next one is a uh, painting I made for this year's show. And I like painting Adobe out of context. And so in this case, we have window, boarded up window. It's part of a church. It's just an abstract cropping of a realistic piece of Adobe church. In this case, I named it uh, UFO because uh, the light here is floating out here. And as, as I painted it, I just thought, you know, it's, it's New Mexico. We can do UFOs here. Uh, we probably have more UFOs than we know. So uh, again, this painting being the adobe in juxtaposition to the other adobe painting, you can see how they transition a little bit. Some realistic, some modern. Uh, this next painting is, is one of my very favorites. And, and I, it was, I think it was almost the last painting I made for the show. And, um, I'm very happy with the composition, the way it turned out. What really makes this piece go is, is the green in the center here. And so what's happened is, is that I didn't really put that green any place else in the painting. Uh, generally speaking, I'll, I'll try to balance out color. And if I have the green there, I want to make sure the green goes someplace else. But in this case, it's really based off of uh, making one of these adobe scenes. It's a lot of overlay, but in this case, there are probably 12 different layers of color here, allowing different colors to show through from the last field I painted. And so the, the very subtle orange shapes um, are intentional, but I don't plan that you know, until the last minute. Uh, a painting like this, along with the other absolute abstracts, are a bit out of, uh, body experience. You know, quite honestly, I do some things I cannot explain. I don't have a theory behind the way I paint my modernist works, other than the fact they've been influenced by uh, mostly uh, Picasso, 
Alain Moreau, uh, Calder, a lot of uh, French uh, painters uh, that were dominant in, in the 1930s to 1950s. Uh, this next painting is a, a quick study almost, uh, meant to be kind of a, a California scene, but it, it represents the blue sky up above by making shapes like this, these circular shapes that uh, exist. Those basically indicate clouds if you need, needed to really have an explanation of, of what that's all about. Um, this painting, the small painting, again is a, a repaint from a painting I made several years ago. And um, it's called Dixon Country. And, and the idea is that Maynard Dixon is uh, the fellow who's really been around uh, uh, this area quite a bit. He's known for his paintings uh, of New Mexico or Southern Utah. Um, the Indian was introduced to, to give composition to the piece. And I, I, I just like the idea that the Indian, again, is put against a large sky, which I find is pretty important for this part of the world. Um, this painting, okay, this is, uh, what do we call this, O'Keeffe's Cliffs? And it's a 24 by 30. It's a painting that I started off with several years ago, but didn't finish it until uh, I started painting for this particular show uh, last year in the winter of uh, 19. So it, it's, it's a road that goes up toward the cliffs, uh, close to Abiquiu, New Mexico. And so you can more or less recognize the, the landforms and that sort of thing from, while it's not like anything O'Keeffe would paint, it is still her territory and her palette. The next painting is one that I uh, made back in uh, the fall of 19. And, and the thing is that this painting, it was one that I really wanted to learn about uh, using gray colors to offset the, the brighter colors. So what happens is, is that by making you know, a few shapes with the color within them, uh, it, it, and, and the gray is very subtle, it has other colors behind it, so it's layered. It really does have a veiled sort of uh, aspect. And then I came in with the tip of a back end of a brush to, to scratch in what is, in my estimation, something almost like hieroglyphic uh, forms that you might find in an in a Indian uh, cave or an Anasazi site. And so that's how that relates to New Mexico. Now here, these 12 by 12s, I generally make a 12 by 12 as a study for larger paintings. So some of the things you'll see here will end up being larger paintings probably in next year's show. So it's kind of the interesting ongoing uh, quality. Uh, speaking of which, this is, uh, I think it's my 30th, 29th or 30th show out of 33 years here at the Meyer Gallery, which is uh, something I'm quite proud of. And uh, it's a relationship that not many artists get to enjoy. But uh, if any of you know the Meyer Gallery, you'll know of which I speak. You know, it, it's really a terrific uh, arrangement. The first uh, representational piece is a piece from uh, the Canyonlands, not too far from O'Keeffe Cliffs. And this is up uh, toward an area called Christ of the Desert Monastery. It's where the Rio Chama River and the Galliana River uh, converge. And so uh, it's really a place that I probably paint as much of New Mexico. This is my favorite subject. So at any rate, this is where the, the, the river in the foreground has wiped out the road. So it's, it's you know, somebody's going to look at it and go, well, you know, what in the world has this guy done? But that's what happens in New Mexico. You get a big uh, rainstorm, pretty soon you're not getting out of the area you just drove into. So that, that that's, talks about that. Now, um, this one uh, is, is a play off of the Adobe scenes that you've seen many of mine. And uh, it's not based on any particular painting, that, that it's, meaning it's not associated with a representational painting as some of these are. Uh, this particular painting really kind of interested me with shapes and color, and I really wanted to have the adobe and turquoise play off of one another. So as they do, you know, this is, uh, I would say, a prototypical abstraction of New Mexico. 
uh, this scene is probably what I'm best known for is Aspens. And um, I probably have painted more Aspen than most people dare to admit to doing. But uh, the fact of the matter is it did get my kids through college, so uh, it, it all worked out somehow. Um, the next painting, this painting uh, relates to another painting that I have in the show. Uh, it is based off of a painting of nasturtium. We will see that in a bit. Um, but it's probably emulates more of the modernist movement in uh, the south of France. And, and that has a great deal of influence on this particular piece. Very geometric, uh, more formal, a uh, little less um, loose, as you will see some of my abstracts that I've made. Uh, the next scene, uh, I do a lot of work over in Arizona. I have a, an association with the Arizona Sonoran Desert Museum. Um, their art facility and uh, their art institute. I'm uh, proud to say that I have uh, probably six or seven paintings in that permanent collection. Um, so Arizona, and I, I like welcoming that into uh, New Mexico. We don't have cacti here, but I love painting them, so here we are. Um, this scene is based off of another painting, and I'll bring it up later on as we go to that one. Uh, it's, it shows some things behind. Uh, the honest answer to this is there are, there's a little bit of graffiti that I've painted in this other painting that I'll be showing you later. Uh, and so I've picked up on that. And so these elements are small elements, but they represent the turquoise building that will be in the other scene. They also represent the graffiti that can be seen in the other scene. So it's, it's very much related to it, but it, it is a stretch, you know, for people to understand what's going on. This painting in the corner um, is on the high road uh, uh, going to Taos from Santa Fe. It's a very typical spring scene where the grasses are bright green and everybody's uh, ready for uh, the summer to come along and the better weather. So this really does emulate the blue skies above idea. And um, I've painted so many small towns in New Mexico and quite honestly, uh, they've changed a lot over the last 40 years that I've been painting them, and uh, they really, you know, the changes are such that I paint a lot from photography, and these scenes are from older photography of towns that have older buildings. And uh, at the time, they were quite useful. Since they may have fallen uh, into a state of disrepair, who knows? But uh, New Mexico scenery, I really enjoy. Uh, this painting, this abstract, is one that. Um, is, you know, I'd like to explain more about it other than the fact that I really did want to uh, talk about, uh, it's a California abstract, and so it's talking about the sand and the ocean and, uh, you know, be really speak. This painting, possibly the strangest painting in the show, but you know, we'll have a couple others that are interesting in that respect. This one is called Navajo Cover-Up. It's the line of Indians that typically sell their silver and, and their, their artifacts, their crafts, in the Santa Fe Plaza, uh, right in front of the, the, the uh, governor's uh, museum. And so the idea here is that this bright sun is, it's from a photograph that I took, so it's an actual scene where the Indian uh, wasn't hiding from me. She was just trying to get the sun out of her eyes. She probably didn't have her umbrella like many of them have. And uh, this was the best uh, solution she had. And I thought, well, what the heck? I'll make a painting, see if, see if anybody else thinks it's uh, <laughs> unusual enough. Um, in this corner, we have a scene that's on the back of the brochure, as a matter of fact. This one is um, Yellow Mesa. It is, again, in the Rio Chama. Uh, late afternoon hitting west so the sun there's so dramatic i mean it, to me it's just it's it's a thrill to be able to have the opportunity to paint it it really is and, and so the, you know so many of these things paint themselves i'm i'm just around trying to interpret it you know so uh in some ways these are abstractions of reality you know it's uh trying to be real but keeping it impressionistic yet Painterly. Um, this Aspen scene is uh, one that's pretty typical 
of uh, the aspen that are up in the Santa Fe Ski Valley. And um, I guess autumn is probably the most thrilling time of year here in New Mexico. We really do enjoy having the opportunity to paint these aspen. And, and in this case, they, they're scarred. They've, they've got a tale to tell. I'm not sure I really understand that tale, but um, everything you see in it, every branch that's there has somehow been nicked and carved and made possible by either uh, antlers being scraped against them or people actually sometimes carving their initials, unfortunately. But that's, uh, my mother had a term, it was fools' names like fools' faces always appear in public places. So don't carve on the aspen trees, please. Okay. Um, where should we start? Okay, here we go. Now, if we look at this overall corner, which we might want to, um, this painting, this abstract modernist painting is a derivative of this painting. So what we're really talking about is a bit of orange, the turquoise doors, uh, mostly the adobe, but I didn't want to push make it so literal that the pink was the same proportions and same everything. So it, it, it would be uh, basically a big old duh. You know, I, even I could figure that out. Um, in this case, what I was more interested in is what making the grays here, those tan colors coming out of the tree. And so this, this uh, winter scene, and this is again down by the, the Palace of the Governors, downtown Santa Fe. Uh, the Indian figure I use here is one that I've uh, introduced in some other paintings. Had uh, several years ago a painting that was, was like this. And uh, it, that painting was called, uh, There She Is. Uh, and this one is just called, Just Walking Down the Street. And this one is called Dua Diddy. So you can understand how I, old I am in, in the old rock and roll songs that I kind of uh, go back to occasionally. So uh, those two are associated to one another. Uh, Aspen scene, again, northern New Mexico, Aspen, um, looking kind of uh, toward the Sangres with uh, snow-capped peaks. Um, again, one of my favorite subjects. This uh, abstract down below is uh, based off of a, a painting that was in last year's show. So it's got a lot of subtle colors and, and this sort of thing. So as a, a, a result, this red streak uh, was, was dominant. And the fact is, is this was a study for a 36 square larger abstract. Um, and in this show, I'm not sure I did any of these where I did a small one with a larger uh, study from it. So I've kind of evolved a little bit in the way I, I treat my modernist paintings. Um, so as a result, this painting, uh, you know, as you can see, watch the figure, it'll show up elsewhere. And so we'll follow that. Now over here, we have uh, the uh, nasturtium I was talking about with the painting that we'd seen before that had, had the influence of a, the geometric, modernist, uh, south of France sort of look. Uh, this one, if I'm gonna paint a still life, I've gotta give it a little more uh, something going on. So I treat the edges differently, you know, so it looks as though that, that there's a little more going on. It's, it's definitely a two-dimensional piece that uh, I like making. Um, these nasturtium grow in our gardens in, in California. So they're easy uh, to paint. My wife, Kate, picks these things, puts them in interesting jars. And, and so as a result, I, uh, I end up taking advantage of it. So that's what this one is. Um, these two paintings, again, the Chama Canyon and uh, a, a juniper, the old ancient juniper that's you know, been growing up there for a long time. It's, it's, it's uh, if you can believe it, older than I am and uh, just about as weathered, so that, that's all cool. Uh, the piece below is uh, an abstract that is um, one of my earlier abstracts. You might be able to tell the difference. It's more complicated. It's got a lot more uh, angles and things going on. The later works I'm making right now are probably ones that really have a lot more to do with being loose, offering more of the, the uh, drawing, if you will, that goes into it, and, and I'll interject 
that my undergraduate degree in art was in drawing, not in painting, at the University of New Mexico. Um, later trained to be a, 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 an artist who worked in advertising and later in advertising design. So the idea there is that I evolved with my undergraduate degree. I got more into painting as I became a person who would paint for advertising. So uh, in that case, that is why I kind of uh, evolve in this stuff. This painting now is, is, uh, is, and I think I said earlier on that other painting was the one that had the green in the foreground or in the field of orange and, and uh, salmon colors was my last. That's actually was a lie. And you'll find that not everything I tell you is the truth, but you'll have to work with me. Um, so what happens here is this, this is the last painting I made for the show. And it's, it's pretty typical. The last painting an artist makes, he always thinks that's the best painting. Um, and uh, it, it's just, I guess I discovered a lot of stuff in this painting that I, I hadn't uh, before. I probably, this is a painting that really did influence the blue skies above uh, idea. And that was, I had this entire area painted blue at one time. And every color that's been added on was added on almost at a separate time with the idea that it, it just kept growing. And, and uh, I wanted the blue up here to feel as though it was behind what was going on over the top of it. So in other words, I think as far as color goes, this is by far my, um, what I consider to be one of my best paintings as far as, as palette and, and understanding how colors work with each other down here is kind of an interesting juxtaposition of, of red, green, and the yellow, you know, just really um, two uh, primaries and, and uh, secondaries and, and balance the color as we go around. The, the bright reds will show up intermittently throughout the painting uh, to get the, the viewer's mind to, to not just get bored or you know sit in one place I really do like it when the, the viewers can be challenged and have their vision move around the painting so there is some uh, movement uh, that they're really uh, the viewers are uh, introducing something I, I don't necessarily demand so um, so in this area we have uh, this painting was I think I started basing it off of one of my Adobe paintings. But what happens here is that I really like is I'm, I'm really dealing with some of the translucent colors, uh, almost in a water color line technique. Um, it's about this point where I, I tell you that I paint in acrylic. So all of my, my uh, medium is water based. So um, it drips, you know, a lot of times I'll do a, you know, a field of, of color, and then when I'll come back in is spray it with a, a fine mist, and it will ultimately drip. And you'll see that as an, an element in many of my pieces. So um, as, as you get into this one, it softens it also. It makes all of these colors a little more soft, but it's, it's these watercolor-like things I particularly liked about this piece. Um, you've probably figured out by this time I use black. And it's almost as a framing element to keep the viewer's eye into the scene. And the black gets balanced the same way as the color does. So I keep it over here, I keep it here, and I keep it here. So your eye will move around based off of the, the values, in this case, dark versus light. This is a painting that is probably the most unique in the show. Um, and it, it has a... a an interesting background is it, I started this painting out with the idea that it would be, uh, well, it, it would be an epilogue. It would, it would be this type of thing that there are, there's a story to be told here, you know, so it's very didactic. What happens is we've got a cat sitting in a bird bath with a bird outside of the bath over here. So it's kind of a, a, a scheme that the, the cat has. And this is the painting that has the graffiti in the background. So what's happened here is the graffiti that you might have seen in the other painting is here. The turquoise you saw in that other abstract is, is in the background here. And all the time, there's yet another landscape uh, being demonstrated as it reflects from the shadows of, of this uh, uh, old adobe portal. Um, again, it, it, it tells the story of how 
some of the old buildings in, in northern New Mexico has become more dilapidated, and, and uh, it's, it really is, you know, a, a story as we go through watching New Mexico change over the years. Um, this is a scene, actually, this is a scene I made uh, on a, a trip to Scotland and uh, brought the photography back and then fine-tuned it and got it to work the way I really wanted to. So. Uh, this is on the western side, probably toward uh, an area called Fort William. And as you drive around, you find all of these locks that are nestled back in here. And so that, that really speaks to that. I've been to Scotland a couple of times, and it's a favorite subject. Um, this piece has uh, an interesting history. It, I've probably painted this painting. If you, look, if you were to look at the back of this painting, it's been repainted five times. Okay, so I started it. Uh, it was okay, yeah, but not good enough. So then I changed it, and then I reworked it, and then I put stuff in it, then I take stuff out of it. So finally, uh, this year, I got it to a place where I really did like it, so I could put it back into a show. And it's it's probably the last, first time I was at a show, I think was like 2002, then 2009, and here it is 2020. So, you know, but it does. It speaks to the fact that acrylic's a great medium and it'll last forever. <laughs> Kind of. <laughs> so here, uh, this particular abstract uh, is in conjunction with one that's coming up in two paintings. And I'm dealing with the, the red figure that I used in, in another painting ends up here. This is kind of the, the, the idea of, of a figure based with a field of yellow and an adobe wall and all of this stuff. So it's really kind of a you know, I, can, I can't really tell you in a uh, literal way that, you know, is, is this a shape of something? You know, is that a, you know, a rhino or something? Who knows? As I say, it's kind of an out-of-body thing, and, and, uh, but I'm trying to look at one painting, remember it, and then include those elements back in it, both uh, color and shape. Um, again, this is a numbered painting. Uh, Painted in uh, California, and again, with it's really a color study as much as anything. Um, I really like the the balance of yellows and, and how they work. And, and being in a modernist form, we've got a shape within shapes. But here we also have this this drip idea. In this case, I painted this painting upside down, so the drips are going upward, which we know on the planet Earth that's not uh, possible, but it's the, what I do, and when I make one of these paintings, probably the truth of the matter is, when someone buys one of my modernist paintings, it's quite possible they can connect with it. They, they buy it, they take it home, and then they keep turning it. And so they up, basically end up with more than one painting uh, as time goes by. So it's, uh, it was, it's not intentional, but I can understand why someone would do it, and I'm not so ingrained in the way I make a painting that, uh, except for a representational painting, that you need to hang it upside down. But so that's the deal. Here's the painting now that uh, related to uh, the, the red figure, the abstract that's uh, right over here, and you, it's the adobe, it's the red, it's the yellow, and again, this particular painting is blue skies up above. It just is what makes me think that. Uh, this is, you know, just a hot summer day and, uh, or an autumn day, who knows, but the fact is that the Indian figures that are blanketed are pretty typical year round. So it's, it's not really a seasonal item. Um, here I really, I love the back. This is the back of uh, a, a Northern New Mexico church. In this case, the front is, you know, very typical. It has a courtyard, it has uh, a gate. Uh, and big doors going into the cathedral. In, the, in this case, the back of this wall really interested me because it's almost like some of the other adobe uh, things that I make that are big fields of adobe. And a painting of adobe is, is one of those things that, uh, again, it has many, many layers. But what ha what's happened in this one is, is that when they make the adobe wall, uh, they, they put mud on it. They literally put mud on it and they do it at, not at the same time so they don't always end up as you know a real smooth idea 
the the uh, the idea of while well, adobe walls slump out at the bottom is because the mud's wet and when they make it over the years each time they mud over the last one the mud slumps toward the bottom and it gives a very interesting shape it makes you you know new mexico buildings more unique than almost anything in the u.s um this painting of the uh, uh night scene i don't do too many nocturnals um and this is one looking toward the Hemis mountains uh, that I could uh, see from a studio that I had not too long ago. And the idea was that uh, there's something really wonderful about trying to interpret uh, nighttime color. You know, you, artists over the ages have, have taken incredible steps to try to make it more interesting than not. Um, uh, Frank Tinney Johnson, a Western painter, uh, did a fabulous job with night scenes. And you always turn out seeing greens and turquoises. The one thing you don't see at night as, with the human eyesight is red. Uh, our eyes just can't pick up red. You know, not a stoplight red, but it's just a house that's painted red in the moonlight. You can't really tell. Um, we'll go to the next painting, which is uh, sunflowers are... Uh, sunflowers in Chamisa to New Mexico are the thing that people look for. In this case, this is a painting I made last fall, and uh, it's just south of uh, Santa Fe. In the background are the Sandia Mountains, and uh, it gives you the idea that there's so many different aspects to light, and in this case, I love that, that warm, hot day and the way the light hits. Uh, it, it, it's a backlit situation, but it's probably, I would guess, uh, September. And the scene is, it, the days are still warm, but the, the color in the, in the landscape is starting to turn to autumn. And it's an exciting juxtaposition between warm and cool. And uh, again, I like painting these things. As I paint these flowers, one of the techniques I use is, is what I call negative painting, and that is to outline or basically define the shape of the, the subject by painting around it. In that case, it gives it shapes that I couldn't make otherwise. Uh, so having been, you know, at this game as long as I have, I've had a pretty large toolbox at this point in time. So uh, you've been able to see just about every painting except this last one. And the, again, it's an aspen scene uh, made, it's a complex aspen scene made up in the uh, uh, Santa Fe Ski Basin. And uh, what you might see here are the winter colors coming on and the pinks that develop as, as uh, the leaves fall off the trees. So they really do become quite interesting. Now, if you look at the uh, early uh, New Mexico painters, uh, the Taos Society, um, a lot of these colors uh, aren't, aren't new. You know, I, I've learned an awful lot from what uh, those who have come before me and, and done such a fantastic job. So a lot of these realistic paintings are influenced by the early tiles painters. And so, yeah, I think you've seen just about everything in the show. And for me, this is the first time I actually get to see the show together. I, I send sections of the show to the gallery and uh, some are pre-sold, but really the idea is that I can't transport them all at one time. Uh, the ones that get painted in California, I tend to either ship or, or uh, travel by car. The ones I paint here might still be in my studio. I painted them in the fall, they stayed there until, until now. And so the idea is that it's the first time I get to see the show, and I'm so happy you've been able to see it also. So thanks for uh, taking your time to enjoy this.